position. The thing is, with it's not very common in the National Football League to have players or have coaches be fired in mid-season. It's happened rarely, but right. certainly not. It won't happen here. Guys, it won't happen here. But it's beyond embarrassing. It's pitiful. And, you know, Tresman has made a, an airtight case to be relieved of his duties. But it won't happen because of the way the Bears organization structures things. But, yeah, back to Phil Emery. He's the guy that put this team together, including the coaching staff. But beyond that, I've said that a thousand times. When you insist on starting certain players like Chris Conte, Shane McClellan, guys that, that are not respected by your opponents, there's a fight at the bat rack. They can't wait to play it. What do you think Aaron Rodgers spelled out relax five weeks ago? He knew they could get themselves right against the Bears. But more importantly, the monsters of the Midway have become the mockery of the Midway, giving up 50 points in back-to-back -back games. That has never happened in the modern-day NFL. It happened in 1923. Who cares? 19, you know, 50 points plus in back-to-back -back games. Beyond unacceptable, it's an embarrassment. And you know what? Like I said, I feel bad for the Bear fans that set up and waited for this with, with high hopes and anticipation that all the gobbledygook coming out of this coaching staff, oh, we worked hard, we prepared, we did this. It doesn't mean a hill of beans because from its core out, this is a bad football team. You're going to have to make some big changes, and it's got to start at the top. You know, leadership, everybody's used that word quite a few times up at Hallis Hall when you talk about Mark Preston, you talk about Phil Emery. Did maybe this whole thing start at the beginning of the year when they allowed Lance Briggs of to course it did. that opening day of practice so he could open up his rib joint in Sacramento? And never before. And we like Brandon Marshall. He's been on this program for a number of years, and he's not with us now. But it doesn't matter. A football team is an organization that it has sacrificed all outside pursuits for the good of the group. And you know what? When you allow one of your players to mount a plane and go to New York and back every Tuesday because they want to do something to further their career outside of the game of football, that is where a head coach says, no, I will not allow it. Every, every guy on the team would want to, but you as the coach, you got to be daddy and say, no, I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to allow you to go to California and open a rib joint on the Monday before for the opener. All these things add up, and a little means a lot in the NFL, and we saw it tonight, because you know, it doesn't take much for the Green Bay Packers to start rolling, and once they did, we had zero answers. And Mel Tucker should be embarrassed. You know, and, and, and last week, when uh, Lamar Houston, you know, tore his knee up in that insane, asinine uh, celebration, he didn't, you know, you know, denigrate him. He basically said, it's okay, we're all a family. That's nonsense. You're not a family. Families don't cut each other. Football team is an organization built on the premise of winning, the common good of winning. And you know what? When you do something that's a detriment to that, you should be taken to the woodshed. They wouldn't do it. They basically wanted to make excuses. That is why we are three and six and the laughing stock of not only the NFC North, but maybe the entire NFL. Last week we saw Jay Cutler juxtaposed against Tom Brady tonight. Yeah, he's had a couple more, I think. Because guess what? Minnesota may have a guy named 